Hello and welcome to Krita. Krita is a free digital painting software. It compares a little bit to GIMP, but uh, to my opinion, it's much more powerful and has much easier workflows. You can do quite amazing things with Krita. You can just do digital painting, but you can also do storyboarding. You can do animations um, and all types of other things. And in this tutorial, I would like to provide you a general introduction. I will talk about the workspaces, that means the pre-configured screen layouts, about dockers. Dockers are these user interface elements for, for example, uh, picking a brush for color selection and so forth. You can rearrange this as you like. I will explain this uh, later on. Then we will talk very quickly about the pop-up palette. This is uh, this little user interface uh, element here where you can quickly select your colors and your brushes. Uh, we will talk about important shortcuts, for example, how you can drag the canvas, how you can uh, resize the canvas, uh, how you can rotate the canvas. And it's very important to learn the corresponding shortcuts if you want to work efficiently. Then we have uh, a couple of interesting tools here on the left side. I will take you through some of the most important tools for color picking uh, and so forth. Uh, we will talk very quickly about layers to give you a rough overview what layers are all about and how you can use them. And finally, I will also take you through my <coughs> most favorite brushes. You see we have a large number of available brushes and I will try to give you a very quick introduction to the most important ones, especially to do some kind of uh, smooth shading like you see here. And this is, I, I will explain this very quickly uh, in the last part of the demo. So let us first take a look at the so-called workspaces. Workspaces are basically pre-configured screen layouts and they contain certain types of dockers. For example, here we have the brush selection docker, we have this advanced color selector docker, and some other dockers. You can uh, change the screen layout by, or the workspace, the selected workspace, by clicking here on the upper right on this little icon. And for example, there is a special workspace for animations, for 2D animations, which includes this timeline element. There is another workspace for doing storyboarding and another useful workspace, this Big Paint 2 workspace, which includes uh, this overview docker where you can easily navigate in a large, within a large painting and quickly uh, see where you are currently located on the canvas. So let me switch back to the default layout. Next we have the dockers. Once again, dockers are these little uh, input areas here, like this advanced color selector or the brush selector. You can undock um, a docker by clicking on this little icon and then put it in some other place by just dragging it. So for example, we could move this uh, docker below the layers docker. Let me show you very quickly how this works. <clears throat> so now we have it in this new position. And there are many more dockers which are not visible by default. You can find them here under settings, dockers. One useful docker, for example, is this palette docker. This looks like this with a number of predefined colors where you can choose from. And another one which I found interesting is this uh, small color selector. Which, which just shows this color band and you can just click anywhere to pick your favorite color. If you have modified the layout and added some additional dockers, you can save this by clicking here again on this workspace icon, assign a new name, for example, my layout to this new layout and then save it. <coughs> um, here I have already created a, a layout before, therefore I just click overwrite. And now um, I can just select my new layout again here. You find my new uh, my layout here in the list. And I, when I click on this, you see that I have now my small color selector and the palette included here. So this is the new layout. So let's uh, quickly switch back to the default layout for now. Next thing I would like to show you is the use of the pop-up palette. 
uh, you can open this by clicking uh, the right mouse button. And this basically allows you to quickly select colors, for example. Uh, this is a very convenient thing and also to access all of your favorite brushes, which are visible here. So these are all the brushes that I have previously selected under my favorites. <clears throat> so these brushes are visible here and I have a very quick way to access them. I don't have to move all the way down to this docker area. I just press the right mouse button to make this visible or invisible. So next question is, how can you paint on the canvas? <laughs> um, for this, I would like to open a new image. Right now we have this image open here, which is called orange.kra. This is what you see right now. It has multiple layers, as you can see. I don't want to destroy this, therefore let's create a new one. Just say file new. Uh, we can stick with the default screen resolution, background color and so forth. Just say create. <laughs> And now you notice we have a new tab here on top, um, which has no name for now. So this is not saved. And what is created here by default is uh, a picture or an image with two layers, a background layer and a paint layer. And I can just hide the background layer, which is black. And then you just see the paint layer, which is transparent. It has nothing on it right now. And now, uh, first of all, you can open the quick selector here by clicking the right mouse button. You can choose your color. For example, we can uh, choose black or let's choose a gray color. And you can choose one of your favorite brushes here. We, I'm now choosing a fine brush here. And then you can start painting. Right now I'm using my mouse, therefore the results are not very smooth. You could also use a tablet. I have a tablet here on my desk and if you see the big difference is that it's much smoother. So I would highly recommend that you use the tablet instead of the mouse. <clears throat> so this is how you do your paintings um, and you can also enable the background color again. What is also useful is to modify the brush size, you can do this by uh, dragging the mouse and keep the, this, uh, the shift key pressed. And then you see that you have a larger brush. So this, this is the, ba uh, the basic workflow for drawing and for selecting brushes and colors. So one thing that you would probably like to change when you work with multiple um, images at the same time is the window mode. So what, what, is, what do I mean with this? Uh, when I go back to full screen mode by pressing the tab key, you notice that I still see these two tabs here on top. And in many cases, this, this is what uh, nothing that you want to have. You really want to see the picture in its full size without these tabs. So how can you remove these tabs? Uh, this can be done here under Settings, uh, Configure Krita. Then under the General Settings, you click on Window. And now under Multiple Document Mode, we currently have selected tabs, but you can also select sub-windows. And if you do this, um, the tabs will disappear. Uh, instead, uh, you will switch between your different drawings by going to the Windows uh, menu here. And then you, you select the particular window that you want to see. Right now, we are looking at the orange KRA file, but we can also switch to the new file. And the effect is more visible in, if I go to full screen mode, because now I really see everything full screen. And if I want to change to the other uh, image. I just go back out of full screen. I select the different the, the different image here, and now I can back, go go back to full screen mode by pressing the tab key. And this is probably <coughs> uh, useful because now you don't see anything else but your drawing canvas. So next, I would like to show you some of my favorite tools. For this, I would uh, leave the full screen mode by pressing the tab key again. And since I want to draw in my new image, I'm switching here under Windows to the new image I have just created. 
Um, first of all, it's really important that you learn the corresponding shortcuts for all of these tools. Uh, in some cases here, these are not always the default shortcuts because I have redefined this for my own purposes. Um, let me start with uh, a normal with the normal brushes. Uh, this can be selected here. Uh, uh, you will draw with the currently selected brush, with it, which is uh, this one here right now, but you could also change it and just select a new brush here. For example, this uh, fine line drawing tool, which is uh, quite useful. Um, and uh, to select the shortcut, you just, uh, for, for the corresponding tool, you just press the corresponding key. For example, here, if I switch, switch to this pointer, uh, to select my dynamic brush, for example, I just press the B key. And you see the cursor is changing and I'm back in my dynamic brush. Um, what is the advantage of the dynamic brush? I have previously selected this one here. The, pr the problem with this one is if you have a mouse, it's not drawing very smooth. As you can see here, the dynamic brush is much smoother. Um, so this is very useful. Another useful tool is the uh, color picker. So let's say you want to continue drawing in gray. You just click the control key on your keyboard and then click on the area. So the, the uh, cursor will change to this color picker icon and then you can uh, move the mouse over any area on your screen to select the corresponding color. For example, here I'm selecting gray. Um, I can also move my mouse over this white area here to select uh, the white color, whatever you like. So this color picker is quite useful. Um, and if you want to assign your own keyboard shortcuts, you can do this by just going here to settings configure Krita and under keyboard shortcuts you will find one section which is called tools and tool shortcuts and here you will find all of the keyboard shortcuts to all of these tools here that are visible in this in this docker here on the left side. So we already talked about the dynamic brush tool, the color picker tool. Next on the list is the line tool. The shortcut here I have assigned is L. If I just press L, um, I have, I'm in my line tool. Now I can just click anywhere and drag the mouse to draw a line with the current color and the currently selected brush. Um, so this is useful. Let us just select a different brush to show you the difference when I draw a line. And of course, I can also modify my current color. Um, oops, like this. So this is how the line tool works. <clears throat> then I have different types of selection tools, which you can access here in this section. For example, rectangular selection, the elliptical selection. I have assigned a shortcut for the elliptical selection because this is also what I use pretty often. Uh, so shortcut is E. If I click on the E key, I'm in this elliptical selection and now I can uh, select a, uh, <coughs> um, a circular area. Uh, I can press the delete key on my keyboard to remove everything inside that selected area. And now I can start drawing inside this area. And for example, I could, could use a normal fill operation to fill in a new color in that area, the normal fill operation is this one here. Uh, the current color is red, so now I should see this red uh, color. I can, of course, I can change it again with something, with something else. So this is useful. Another useful uh, tool is, um, or maybe just let's quickly talk about the contiguous selection. If you have already drawn something and you want to change, for example, this area here, this tool is very useful. This is this one here, shortcut in my case is S. Uh, you can just click on this area here and then with this tool, you see the cursor has also changed. With the selection tool, you can easily select uh, yeah, areas that have similar colors, so in this case, 
could be this one, this one, or this one. And then you can, for example, fill in again a new color with the fill tool. For example, if we want to change it to this one here. So this is quite useful. Um, what else? Then we have the gradient fill. The gradient fill, the gradients are visible here on top. So right now we can we have we can select this one here, which creates a gradient from the current foreground to the current background color. This is my foreground color. Uh, and now let me change the background color maybe to something else. This one, for example. So <clears throat> now we are creating a gradient from green to uh, green to red by just uh, yeah selecting an area and then selecting the gradient fill tool. So like this, for example, since we have this was the wrong thing because I had previously another selection here. So let's do this again inside the selected area. So this is the expected result. And once again, we could also fill that circle here. If we just use this continuous selection tool, click on the circle, then click on the and fill and then we can uh, fill the circle with this gradient. We can also choose a new gradient by clicking here on the on this button here on the top. For example, we can select this one here and then do the same thing uh, inside the selected area. What is also useful is the freehand selection. Uh, this is this one here. If you have a a mouse, uh, a tablet that is also useful. You can do some smooth uh, selection with the mouse. It's a little bit more difficult. And then again, you can fill this section. First of all, we can remove everything. We can fill it with the current gradient. So this is how you use the freehand selection. If you uh, use the keyboard combination Control A, you are deselecting everything. And now, if you if you draw uh, here with the gradient tool, you will basically override everything, which is probably not what you want. So, by pressing Control Z, we are undoing this. Um, finally, we have the Move tool. The Move tool can be used to move everything which is on the current painting layer. Um, so, for example, right now this is our current layer which we have selected. Let's select our text layer which I have previously created. This is just showing this text here. And now I can, if I want to move this, I just select the layer here. This is my text. And now I uh, select the move tool. This is this one here. And now I can move this layer wherever I like. Of course, I can do, do the same thing for my current painting layer. <clears throat> so this is useful. And finally, I can also show you very quickly the transform tool. So to show you the transform tool, let me first of all remove everything on the current layer. We have the current painting layer selected here. If I uh, use the keyboard, keyboard shortcut Control all a for all uh, and then press the delete key, I would uh, delete first of all everything. And now uh, let me do a rectangular selection first. Um, and then let us fill this with a pattern. So we can select the fill operation. Um, and here under tool options, you will find certain uh, options for the currently selected tools. And here we can select use pattern. First of all, let me do a, a, once again a fill operation without a pattern. We have currently selected the green color. So here I should see a green. But we can also use a pattern fill by just uh, selecting use pattern here under the tool options. And now uh, we will fill this with the currently selected pattern. The currently selected patterns, or in general, the pattern selection can be done here under the, uh, this icon. 
So here you find a lot of predefined uh, patterns. Um, let us select a different one, for example, this one here. Again, we can click here. Oops, and now since we have already some stuff here, first of all, let us remove everything again. And now click again the fill <laughs> operation. Now you see a different pattern. So let's co come back to the transform tool, <laughs> because that was uh, what I wanted to show. With the transform tool, you can do a lot of useful things. Um, first of all, uh, let us select the transform tool, this, is this icon here. And now I can do things, for example, like rotating my selection. Um, this is nice. But what is even more interesting, or maybe, for example, moving the position. But what is even more interesting <coughs> is to do um, a different type of transformation. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, to use uh, this type of transformation, which is a perspective transformation. So if I click here, I can now uh, change or move one of these little handles here by just moving over this rectangular area. The cursor is changing to this hand icon. And now I can move this around. And you see here that we get these, this kind of nice uh, perspective effect. And if you want to create, for example, uh, the, the effect of a three-dimensional image with some patterns for the, for the floor or the ceilings, this is a very nice tool. And to finish this, you just press the Enter key and then uh, yeah, you have basically done this, this part of the painting. Once again, to deselect everything, just press the Control A uh, keyboard shortcut. So next, let's talk a little bit more about layers. For this, um, I would like to create, first of all, a new image by selecting File, New. Again, I stick with the default resolution. And here it is. Um, once again, if you could do or you create a new image, by default, you have a background layer and a paint layer. The background layer is locked. Uh, this is indicated by this little icon here. That means if you try to paint on this layer by selecting the layer, um, you see nothing happens. Uh, to be able to paint on the layer, you can just click the lock icon to unlock the layer, and now you can start painting, which is probably not what you would typically do, because this layer is really only for the background, typically. Uh, so here, for example, you could do you could do a fill operation with a single color or a gradient fill as a background. Let's do this. Let's say we want to have this nice uh, gradient fill. We just select the gradient fill tool, and then we have our background. Now we can lock it again, so we don't do any unwanted changes then select the paint layer and then select the brush. And now we can paint on a separate layer and this would keep the background layer untouched. And this is what we would normally do. <clears throat> so this is one thing, um, maybe something which is also interesting for you. How did I, did I actually add my tutorial description here in a separate layer? This was what you saw on the other pictures. So this is actually was created by copying um, a text from another program and paste it inside Krita. I'll quickly show you how I do this. Let's go back to our new image. And here I have my um, WordPad application open. I just take a screenshot by pressing uh, Alt uh, Print. This is the keyboard shortcut to take a screenshot from that. And now I can press Ctrl V on Increta. Uh, it will ask me how I want to insert this. I select as web. And now I have a screenshot of that text in my application. And uh, I can crop this with the crop tool. This is also useful to remove everything outside the text area. Just 
select this area here and I finished the cropping by pressing the enter key. Uh, I made one mistake because I don't want to crop all the picture, I just want to crop the things here in my paint layer, in my currently selected paint layer, therefore I have to select this, this option applies to layer. Uh, so let me do this again. I select the crop tool, I select the area to which I want to crop the layer and now I have the layer option selected and I just press the enter key <coughs> and now I have inserted here this little text and I, again I can move this around. So this is actually how I edit this tutorial description so it's just one picture in a separate paint layer and I can make it visible or invisible. So this is the basics about uh, painting. There are different types of paint layers. So here you can add more paint layers. And in the final part of this uh, tutorial, um, I would like to show you how you can do some smooth shadings and how you work with brushes. So next, uh, let's talk a little bit about the most important brushes for painting and for modifications and shading. Um, first of all, we have different types of eraser tools. Uh, let me draw something before I show you the eraser tool. Let's say we just have this circle. Uh, now we can select the eraser tool and this will just remove parts of this image. There's also another version, a soft eraser, which uh, gradually removes things. It's also useful. Then we have the airbrush tool which gives you very smooth shading. So maybe let's pick a different color for this. Um, this looks like this. You can also modify the opacity level to make it even lighter. Um, so this is kind of useful. Then we have the, let's say, basic brush, which has some sharp edges, which is uh, probably also useful. We have uh, a similar version which has a little bit more uh, soft edges, as you can see here if you zoom uh, a little bit. Then if you want to do some painting, like working with a normal pencil, you can use this one here, this brush. Um, and this gives you very precise drawings. Once again, I can uh, zoom a little bit. And also here you can modify the brush size, of course, you can reduce it to one pixel or even less than one pixel or two pixels. Uh, my favorite is to keep it around about one pixel size. This gives you very precise drawings. Uh, so these are the, let's say, most important brushes. Um, now we have different um, or more brushes to do some shading and some smoothing. Uh, what I would like to show you, let's switch back to the default. Uh, how can you create a sphere that looks like this one here that I showed you in my original picture with some nice shadings. This is what I would like to show you. <clears throat> For this we go back here, we erase First of all, the current picture contents. So how can I create this nice uh, shaded uh, sphere, which looks kind of three-dimensional? The first thing I would do is create a circular selection. Um, the next, I would fill the selection with one single color. Uh, you would typically pick a color with a mid-range intensity. So for example, this darker green just fill the sphere and now you can start with the shading. For the shading there are different types of brushes. First of all we have one brush which is called a just dodge which you can use to lighten certain areas of this color here but you would with the dodge tool you keep the color value so it's not turning white but it stays green but just a lighter green. Let me show you how, how this looks like. So here you can make it a little bit lighter and you see it's always staying green. It's never turning to white. If you want to add a highlight, a white highlight, 
you would need to use this tool here, which is the lighten adjust lighten tool. Make sure that you have selected the right foreground color before you use it, because now it's painting with a darker foreground color. Therefore, it's not lightening, but it's actually turning a little bit darker. So therefore, let's pick a white, for example. And now you see that we are adding uh, this little white, uh, highlight here, which is more white and not green. So this is what I would like wanted to achieve. So we have already done one side and now we want to do the same thing on the other side, but here we want to darken the image. For this we can use the multiply tool. And again, we need to uh, select a darker color first. Here we can select a black, for example. And now you see that we can shade this a little bit darker. <clears throat> and this is basically how you can create this nice three-dimensional effect. One thing you notice here is that the colors are not very smooth. Uh, the more you work here on that canvas, the less smooth it may become. Uh, therefore, it makes a lot of sense to have another tool to smooth out these these um, areas here. For this, we can use, for example, this tool here. This is the basic Blender tool. Let me increase the brush size. And now you notice that this works quite well to smooth out certain areas. Uh, but here we should also reduce the opacity level a little bit. And here you see how we can smooth out the picture. So this can be also useful. Another interesting tool is this one here, the blurring tool, which basically uh, yeah, can be used to unsharpen certain areas. And there is another tool, this Blender Smear tool, which can be used to track your colors in, in a certain direction. This can be also useful. Uh, so typically you can fix certain things. Let's say you made a mistake like this um, and you want to correct this. You can use the tool to smear the color from the inside to the outside. Let's make this a little bit larger. So this can be also useful in some cases. And now I made this change here. Let me show you again how you can make this smooth again with this tool here, with the smoothing Blender Pure tool. So there are all ki kinds of ways to correct these kind of problems. Uh, what you can always do if you want to avoid these kind of um, unsmooth patterns here that may occur after a time, you can also create a new image with a higher resolution for the pixels. So here by default, we have a, a channel depth of 8-bit, but you can change this to 16-bit and then uh, the whole uh, painting experience will be much smoother. But of course, this will take more memory. So this is the downside. Finally, maybe one more thing um, I would like to show you is how you can do some subtle changes to your colors. This is this brush here, the Adjust Color Brush. And for example, let's say we want to turn uh, this, the color of the sphere to a different color. Oops. Let's pick, for example, blue color. Um, then you use this brush here. You see that we are now changing this to blue. So this is also useful. Um, and one more thing I would like to show you is this sharpen and uh, soften brushes. This is also useful. Let's say we have, let's do something else. Create a new spherical selection. <coughs> we fill it with a pattern. <coughs> and now we want to 
<coughs> smooth that pattern section. We can use this brush here. Let me zoom in again so to show you this effect. <coughs> So this is very handy and you can also do the opposite with this brush here. You can sharpen your picture. So it's working in both directions. This is also useful. This is the distortion crow tool. Let's say you want to, you have this pattern fill, but you want to give it a more three dimensional look. Uh, you can use this distortion tool and then just increase the size of the pattern inside the sphere, the sphere to give it a more three-dimensional look. So let me show you this again uh, also. So here you can basically increase uh, the pattern size and you do the same thing here with the decrease uh, tool here on the outer side. So you can give it this more three-dimensional look and once again now this is getting a little bit unsharp and for to correct this you can use this sharpening brush so you can give this whole pattern a more three-dimensional look and maybe also useful finally is this tool here you see I made a little mistake uh, this one here I can now track the whole fill pattern just zoom in and I can drag it to the outside like this. And this can be also useful to correct uh, these kind of uh, um, yeah, mistakes. So I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you liked it, please click on the like button. And see you next time for another tutorial. Thanks for watching.